So hello everybody and uh, welcome at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery. We're ready to bring you uh, baby elephants having their 3 p.m. milk feed here in the nursery. At the moment, we've got 12 baby elephants and all the babies are here because they're orphans. All have been rescued from different parts of the country and they all have different reasons for being orphans. Some of them, we know what has caused them to be left orphans and that's why we rescued them. And others, we're really not very sure. But since they were found when they are still at a very young age, at an age where they would not have survived without the mother's milk, and also without protection against other dangers. So that's why we had to come in so that we can help rescue them. Hundred them here in the nursery for approximately three years. And any time after the age of three, start to reintroduce them back into the world. We always reintroduce them to Savo East National Park and Kibwezi Forest, a process that takes them a minimum of about three years before they make friends among the wild herds. We we'll later on invite them and adopt them in their families. And once they all get adopted in a herd of wild elephants, they'll be trained by the wild elephants on how to stay back into the world naturally. They'll be protected against all other dangers out in the world. They'll also be shown everything within the park by the wild elephants. They'll also be warned against human beings by the wild elephants, which means in the long run, they will have become as wild as any other elephant out there. And when we see that happen, we can successfully say we've achieved our target because our main target is to rescue them, hundred them, and later on reintroduce them back into the world. The elephants have already started to join us, being led by an elephant by the name Mukoka. And Mukoka is one of the boy elephants in the nursery who is approximately two years old. Mukoka was rescued from northern part of Savo East National Park, a place called Edumba. He was identified by aerial surveillance who were on patrol, found the baby all alone within the park, observed him for some time, hoping for the mother to come back and collect the baby but none existed, which meant that he was an orphan. And since he was only about seven months old, he could not have survived without the mother's milk and also against, uh, protection against other dangers. That's why we had to swing in and help rescue him. On my left is an elephant by the name Naleku, who happens to be the youngest arrival in the nursery, who is approximately one year old, who was rescued from the Masai Mara, whose mother is believed to have died from a natural disease and the baby left alone in the company of an auntie who was protecting her. But this auntie already had her own baby that was breastfeeding, which means the leku could not get milk from this auntie, could only get protection. And at a young age of below seven months old, it meant that she could have easily starved and died. And that's why we rescued her right now approximately about a year old. I also have Ziwadi next to me, uh, who is approximately two years old, and Ziwadi was rescued from the Masai Mara. Ziwadi was identified all alone within the park, believed to have been abandoned or left behind by the rest of the family members for reasons we could not tell. Uh, when she arrived in the nursery, we discovered that she was not keen on following the rest of the herd here in the nursery. She was either going the opposite direction or being left behind. And later on, we discovered that she's epileptic. Sometimes she goes into seizures. And when that happens, she's left behind. And we suspect that might have been the reason to why she was left behind. We put her on medication when she came in. She's been improving well. We expect her to be back to normal by the time she'll be ready to go back into the world. We've got uh, the youngest boy in the nursery, an elephant by the name Rojo, right uh, close to me. And Rojo is approximately 16 months old. Rojo was rescued uh, from Savo West National Park. The mother believed to have been killed by poaching. That's why he was right now. He's approximately uh, 16 months and adjusting well the youngest boy that we've got in the nursery at the moment. The big one being fed now, having her bottle, is an elephant by the name Nabulu, who is approximately uh, three years old. 
and Nabulu was rescued from the Masai Mara. She was identified all alone in the park within the Mara, very thin and very weak and very skinny. A sign that she had stayed for a long time without her mother's milk and so needed that urgent rescue and that's why we rescued her. I've, I've got Kyombo right close to me here who is two and a half years and Kyombo was rescued from the Masai Mara also identified all alone within the park at the age of about a year old and that's why we rescued him. We do have Maktao here who is uh, the second oldest boy after Kyombo and Maktao is two and a half years uh, Makta was rescued uh, from Sava Conservation Area near a place called Makta. And Makta was found in our community all alone while at the age of about three months. Uh, nobody knows exactly what happened to the mother or the rest of the family members. But being found in our community suspects that he might have been separated from his family by human beings. And so he's a victim of human wildlife conflict. We have got the main matriarch who happens to be the oldest in size. Uh, I mean the biggest in size and the oldest in the nursery. An elephant by the name Maisha, slightly over three years. And Maisha was rescued uh, from Sava Conservation Area. She is a drought victim. Her mother is believed to have died from starvation and that's why she was left alone. Right now she's approximately uh, over three years old. And so far, taking on the role of the main matriarch or the leader of all the 12 elephants that we've got in the nursery because she's the oldest female. We've got Naboishu right next to my left. And Naboishu has been the latest arrival until about a few days ago when we received our latest arrival. Naboishu is about 18 months old. And Naboishu was rescued from the Masai Mara, the mother having died from a natural disease. We've got Kiasa at the far end, three years old. And Kiasa was rescued from Sava Conservation Area. She is a drought victim, and that's why she became an orphan. We have uh, a, an elephant by the name Laro right behind me, and Laro is about two years old. Laro was rescued from the Masai Mara or Laro Conservancy, identified all alone within this conservancy, unsuspected to have been separated from her family by human beings. And so she's a victim of human wildlife conflict. And lastly, I will introduce to you the latest arrival that we've got in the nursery, an elephant by the name Olorion, walking away at the far end following the wheelbarrow uh, for extra milk. Olorion happens to be the latest arrival who's been with us for about a week now. She was rescued from the Masai Mara Olorion Conservancy uh, this is about a week ago. She's, you can tell she's still a bit thin and skinny compared to the others uh, just because she had been alone for a long time. Once visited and observed for some days, hoping to be reunited with the mother or the rest of the family members, which never happened. And at this age, uh, an elephant still needs the mother's milk. She's approximately about uh, 16, 17 months. And that's why a decision was made to rescue her. So far, adjusting well in the nursery, having been with us for about uh, a week now. So that makes a total of uh, 12 elephants in the nursery, all under our care for the first uh, three years. Before we take them back into the world and we'll always reintroduce them to Savo Conservation Area. We've got three reintroduction centers within Savo. One is based within the northern part of Savo East, Idumba Stockades. We also have the Voice Stockades. And we've got Kibwezi Forest to Mani Springs. Those are the three reintroduction centers that these elephants will be going after the age of three years. We've got our team of keepers that will still monitor them out in the world as they go and come back. When they go out every day in the morning, they get to encounter different world families. Some will invite them and so they spend the day together. Some will reject them and so they go different directions. Some will ignore them, some will charge them, and some will invite them. And so they spend the day together. Our keepers will just observe and see the reaction. And after some time, they will realize special bonds within specific wild herds who will be interested in our orphans. And they keep on looking for one another and spending the day together. 
And later on, our orphans are completely invited in this herd of wild elephants, and they go. Once they go with the wild families, we let them go. We don't force them to stay with us. We don't decide when they should go. They decide by themselves when they're ready to go, which wild herd they want to join, whom they want to accompany with. We just observe and see the reaction and let it naturally happen out in the world. And when that happens, then we can say, we've successfully achieved our target of rescuing them since they were found orphans, hand rearing them, and later on, reintroducing them back into the world. So we feed them on milk on intervals of three hours day and night. Right now, just had the 3 p.m. Uh, bottles. Uh, some of them are enjoying browsing on the greens. Some are enjoying playing in the dust. Actually, we've got uh, Naleku, the youngest. So we've got in the nursery enjoying the dust bath. And then standing close is uh, Maisha and uh, Kiombo, also interested in joining. Sometimes the elephants will roll in the mud to cool themselves to protect themselves from the sun and also to protect from being beaten by some insects. It is also fun for them. They enjoy doing it. And that's why we provide the dust piles and let them do what they want. At some stage, because they're still young, their trunks are not fully grown big and developed. We help them by throwing the dust on the body just because when they would be out in the world, the mothers would be doing that getting a lot of dust and putting on the back. But since they don't have a mother, we are taking on the role of the mother. And that's why we have to come in and help them whenever it is needed. The milk that uh, we are feeding these babies is not an elephant's milk. Of course, it is not very easy to milk a wild elephant and get the real milk. And at the same time, we cannot feed them on cow's milk. Since cow's milk has got lots of fats, elephants are poor in fat digestion. So if you feed them on cow's milk, they will diarrhea to death. And that is why we feed them on a human baby formula whose fats have been emulsified to make it easier for the babies to digest. And it took the founder of this place, the late Dr. Dem Daphne Sheldrick, about 28 years to discover that this is the right formula for them. Before that, she used the try and error method and lost most of the first orphans. But once she pioneered this formula, most orphans have survived and gone back into the world. And that's why it is believed to be close to the real mother's milk. We feed them on intervals of three hours, day and night, for those elephants that are one year and above. Those that are below the age of three, uh, we f I mean those that are over the age of two years, uh, we feed them on uh, three years and above, uh, I mean every three hourly, and when they go to Savo, we increase the duration to about six, uh, after every, every six hours, and when they're very tiny, below a year old, we feed them on demand, just whenever they need it. As we said in the beginning, all these babies are orphans, and that's why they're here. They've been orphaned from different parts of the country, all with different reasons for being orphans. And some of them, the mothers have been killed by poachers uh, due to trade in ivory. Uh, some have been separated from their families by human beings, what we call human wildlife conflict, which is unfortunately on increase in our country at the moment. And a few of them are orphans from natural reasons, like old age, natural diseases, and starvation back into the world. And all, all this having happened to the mothers when the babies are still very young, at an age where they would not have survived without the mother's milk and also without protection against other dangers. And that's why if identified, we are conducted and have to fly out immediately to go and help rescue them so that we can help give them a second chance to survive back into the world. I want to say it's unfortunate that all these reasons are causing these babies to be left orphans and, and, and most of them are caused by human beings. It is unfortunate because it is our role as human beings to care and protect for these wild animals. It is our responsibility to ensure that they are safe in the wild environment. 
and and we need to remember that they all have the right to live and so need to be protected and cared for. It's just unfortunate that uh, some of the reasons that are causing them to be left orphans are human uh, beings. And so we need to come together and make sure that we change our minds, we give a lot of education to everybody, get to know that these animals have the right to live and so need to be protected. Help them to be uh, to have a natural life out in the world by ensuring that you stop to buy things that are made from ivory or come from ivory or from a rhino horn. Anything that is coming from wild animals uh, should be rejected to ensure that all animals have their natural life out in the world. So once more, if you're joining us again, we are at the Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery, a project that uh, was uh, started back in the year 1977 after the death of uh, David Sheldrake, who was a naturalist and the senior founder warden of the large Savannah National Park. He died in 1977, and the project was started in his memory under the management of the widow, who is now the late Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrake who's been running the project since then, until two years ago, when she passed on, leaving the mandate to her daughter, Angela Sheldrick, who was actually taking care of the orphans and working with the mother for about 17 years before the mother passed on. Right now, uh, the project is under the management of Angela Sheldrick. The Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust so working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service to ensure that all animals are safe in the parks. And that is why we do have other projects like mobile veterinary units, anti-poaching teams, community projects. We got the dock unit, we got the aerial surveillance, and all this is to ensure that all animals are having a safe, a better natural life out there. For example, our mobile veterinary unit will ensure that they treat any injured animal out there. If identified, it will be conducted, and we've got our mobile veterinary unit that will go to the scene, help treat the injured animals. If it is in an area where the car cannot go easily, we've got a sky vet that will fly to the scene, treat the injured animals, and immediately set them free to continue with their own natural life after treatment and tip so that they put over all the snares from the parks they'll also help scare poachers from the parks people parks our community will go around the communities that are neighboring the parks on the reserves educating them on how to coexist and stay peacefully together with this world animals. Our community project will also go around the schools that are neighboring the parks and the reserves, are giving education to the children. When the children are still young in school, they need to learn that all animals are important. All animals have the right to live, and all animals need to be protected and given another chance to survive out in the world. And it is important when the children are taught, when they're still young, we believe they'll be able to keep it in their minds. And when they're fully grown, they will help protect and care for all these wild animals. Our dog units will work together with our anti-poaching teams uh, to ensure that there are no poachers in the parks, uh, there are no people burning charcoal in the park, and there are no snares out in the park. Our aerial surveillance will patrol all around the park to ensure that what is happening in the park is natural and should be happening. If there are strangers out in the park, they will alert the rangers on the ground to make sure that they've been flushed out. If there are fires or there's something happening that should not be happening, our aerial surveillance will be able to uh, notify our teams on the ground. So all that is working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service 
for the good of all animals in general. Not only the elephants and rhinos, but all animals in general in our country. You might have realized that the elephants are all close together. They all want to be next to one another. Remember, they are social animals. They always stay in groups and families. A herd of elephants consists of all elephants of all ages. That is, all females of all ages and boys who are below the maturity period and maybe one or two bulls who are there for mating purposes. And uh, the oldest female in a herd of elephants is always the leader or the main matriarch or the one in charge of that herd will be assisted by the other uh, females in the same herd as well. But the oldest female uh, takes the command in a herd of elephants. So they are very social. They protect one another. And the females have got very strong maternal instinct. And that is why if you find a young elephant all alone without the mother, most likely the mother is dead or something serious has happened to the mother because female elephants don't just leave the young ones anyhow. -ly. If you find a baby all alone, then chances are the mothers are not alive. So that is why we have to come in and help rescue them. The boys will leave the families after maturity. This is uh, over 15 years. The females will attain maturity at the age of between 9, 10 years. And the boys at the age of about 14, 15, or 16 years. And the boys will leave the families to join a bachelor herd to stay by themselves or to go and look for females in other herds at a different place. Just like at home in a family, all the children have different characters. The same happens with the elephants. Uh, they have different characters. Some are very social and friendly. Some are very shy. Some are very dull. They want to stay by themselves. And some are very naughty and bully. They want to bully everyone around. They want to show that they are the bosses. And so in this case, in this herd, we've got elephants like Kiasa, who wants to identify herself as the boss all the time, wants to bully everyone around. At the same time, she changes her character to become a mother and wants to protect the young ones. We've got a character like um, Makta right here playing with the in the dust pile, who is a very well-behaved boy, but only likes to play the mounting game. If anyone is, if any of the other elephants is on the ground, you'll find Makta trying to climb. The same mounting game is a fun to uh, Mukoka as well at the far end, who likes to play the mounting game as well. So they all have different characters. Ziwadi next to me is a shy elephant. She wants to be on her own. She wants to do her own things and, and, and not very interacting with all the others. Compared to elephants like uh, Roho, the youngest boy, who want to be right in the middle of the older females, who want to be right in the middle of the rest of the herd. So they all have different characters just like we human beings. And we've got Maisha, who's got a very superb uh, character of being a mother. She's very protective of all the others and uh, a soft mother. Not like the likes of Nabulu and Kiasa, who can make good mothers, but very tough and very rough mothers. So they all have different characters, just like what applies to the human beings. They attain maturity period the same age as human beings, 10 to 15 years. They live approximately the same age like human beings, 60, 70 years. And the lifespan of an elephant depends on the nature of their teeth. They have six uh, sets of teeth and every set will last for about 10 years. That's why at the age of 70 or the teeth are worn out, they'll die from starvation, which is a natural death. They'll start to develop the milk teeth at the age of between two to four months. That is why elephants at that young age, they cannot feed on anything. They start to learn to feed on vegetation at the age of about eight months. The tusks are part of their teeth. They are the incisors. They start to grow when an elephant is almost about two years. And they grow as long as the elephant grows. The size and weight of an elephant varies from one elephant to the other, depending on the genes of that family. And that is why you might find some herds uh, with or some elephants with longer tasks 
some with thinner tasks that varies depending with the genes out in the world. On top lying um, uh, on the dust pile is uh, Maktau. So I'd like to take this opportunity and thank you all for joining us today at this 3 p.m. Uh, milk feeding with the baby elephants in the nursery. 12 elephants, they've had the milk, they've enjoyed the dust pile, they've fed on the greens. They're heading out to the park again until at 5 in the evening when they come back for bed. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us and being with us. You can help support the Sheldrake's work by going on our website. You can help donate towards buying a bottle of milk, towards adopting an elephant, and towards supporting any of the other projects that are done by the Sheldrake's Wilder Trust. So if you go on our website, you'll be able to find that and let us all work together for the good of these wild animals because they deserve the right to life. Thank you very much. We shall be bringing you more of the live views on Monday.